So I posted this question on a student optometry group and this is the response that I got back. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, so I decided to make a video on how to become a good optometrist. So a bit about me, my name is Siobhan, I'm an optometrist working in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I've been working as an optometrist for about six years now. I've worked at really big multinational corporations as well as small independents. So in this video I just want to share some of my experiences, maybe it might help you if you're on a journey of becoming a better optometrist. Let's start with number one. So to become a good optometrist, I think the first key thing is to build good long-term relationship with patients. So here's a bit of a story. When I first started as an optometrist, I worked in corporate jobs. In corporate jobs, we really focused on KPIs or key performance indicators. So the two main metrics that we used were average order value and conversion rate. So average order value is basically how much on average a person would pay for glasses or per consult. So for example, let's say someone paid $1,000 for glasses and another person paid $500 for glasses, then it'll be the average of the two results, which I think is $750. The other one is conversion rate. So conversion rate is basically out of the people you saw, how many purchased glasses. So if you saw 10 people and six of them got glasses, then your conversion rate is 60%, which is quite high actually. Now my thoughts on these metrics are, is that these metrics are short-term goals, so you're only thinking about making a sale at the point of time. Now, if you think there's a very small change, there's a, there's a good chance the patient probably doesn't need new glasses, but you're probably pushing to want to make that sale to make those metrics much better. And now the patient actually trusts you with their decision. Let's say they get the glasses, they come back later and pick up their new set of glasses and they don't notice a big change in prescription. So there's two things that can happen. They can just walk away or they'll ask for a re refund or a remake. So you've wasted all that time. Plus a remake is a big issue because no one else can use these glasses or frames. They just get thrown away, I guess. So instead of focusing on metrics, focus on building long-term relationships. So long-term relationships are a bit more difficult to measure, plus they have a longer term outcome. So you don't see that improvement on the day. Here's one example. I was in a social setting um, and a guy was asking me about getting LASIK and he thought that LASIK would be bad for optometry because obviously you can't get glasses. But in the case of a patient coming in and you ask them about LASIK, you wouldn't say no, just get glasses. You want to empower the patient with as much information as possible. The key is to discuss all the options and make sure they have an informed choice. So you talk about the risks and benefits of LASIK, if their prescription is stable. You can also talk about alternatives to LASIK, including contact lenses and orthokeratology. This is a way of building good relationships and good rapport. When you build that good relationship, that leads me on to the second point. Is that when you play the long game, you're increasing your brand value. All right, so I understand like how this is going. It's not really for optometrists, it's more of a business perspective, but I think it's more or less the same. If you want to be a good optometrist, you need to have that good business sense. So why is it important to have that good brand identity? Because in this day and age, there are a lot of threats to optometry. Some of these include online sales, via glasses or contact lenses and there's a lot of competition now in optometry and there's a big race to the bottom where people are competing just on price. Now unfortunately a lot of these things are outside your control but if you're building that long-term relationship you're able to build a loyal customer following. And I remember one of my managers, my old manager said to me, it's not about what you talk about, it's about how you make them feel and that's really important. If you're building that long-term relationship people will trust you, they'll feel more comfortable with you and your decisions. And if they trust you that works much better than flashy sales or pricing because you can justify your high cost. Now this leads me on to the third point, which is about online marketing. Thanks to the advent of social media, online marketing has hugely increased. So now it used to be just Google Ads, but now it's creating your own blog, your website, your online presence, your social media. Now online marketing is really dominated by large corporates. They have the budget and the teams to actually focus on online marketing. But I think for small business, small independent optometrists, word of mouth is the most powerful thing. It's okay to have a website just to know that they can find you on Google, on Google Maps or they can they know you actually exist or their opening hours. But I don't think focusing on online marketing is too useful for a small independent practice. The reason being is going back to long-term relationships. If you're focusing on long-term relationships, people talk about you, people talk about how good you are. And I think the right person who really cares about their eyesight and values their vision isn't going to go onto Google to find out where to go. They're gonna ask their friends and family where to go. And if you've done a really good job, especially if you're local, and that's why it's really important to build long-term relationships with the local community because they tell their friends and family. Let's make a bit of a shift away from the business side of optometry into the actual individual. I think a really key thing is to generate interest in optometry. And that can be quite hard. You've done your five years in university, you've graduated, but they're still learning to keep on and continuously going. So for me, an example is I really enjoyed combining my passion with optometry. So things I've been passionate about is writing and programming. And it's to some extent a bit of photography as well. Now this year I had the amazing opportunity to work with NZ Optics. The goal of mine was to be able to publish two articles in the optometry magazine. And I was able to accomplish that goal. So the first article I wrote was about cannabis and glaucoma. And the second article that I wrote was about optometry and AI. And that was actually a paid gig. And the benefits of this are you research a topic well into depth as well as you build a relationship. So for example, I built a relationship with NZ Optics 
this magazine gets shared throughout the country so I'm able to build a relationship with people who actually read the article. I've had some messages and emails um, just thanks to these articles. Now, another example is where I combine my programming skills in optometry. Now, one example of programming is that I was able to build a website that allowed optometrists and optical dispensers to perform calculations. And that was a lot of fun to build as well. Now, with that third example of photography, I was able to take a photo of some frames to help out with marketing in a previous workplace that I had. Excellent, now I wanna move on to my final point. And this is about looking at life holistically. So this is not only useful for optometrists, but it can be useful for other professions as well. Now, with optometry, it's gonna be a lifelong career. You're not gonna enjoy every single day. That's why it's really important to look at your life holistically, or haora. Now, before we continue, it's really important if you're struggling through any mental sort of stress, it's really important to seek some professional help, but I'll offer some advice here as well. Just take it as a grain of salt. It may not fix your situation. It's really important that we all come from different situations. What may work for me may not work for you, but I just wanna reiterate, if you're having any sort of issues mentally or stress-wise, it's okay to seek professional advice as well. So you wanna focus on those four pillars, which is physical, emotional, spiritual, and social. Now, for your physical fitness, make sure you're getting enough exercise throughout the day. It can be quite hard because our job is quite sedentary. Another thing to note is that you're inside a dark room all day, and especially during winter months when the daylight hours aren't as long, make sure during lunchtime, or if you have any breaks, getting outside of the clinic, make sure you're getting that, that nice UV light exposure. And in terms of rest, make sure you're sleeping well, make sure you're eating well, and some other things to consider is meditation to reduce stress, as well as journaling to just write your thoughts out on there. And the, the beauty of optometry is that you're in a very small group of people. So I've made lifelong friends in my career. That means you build very good, strong social circles or good relationships with people. So if I'm having a problem, I can always hop on the phone to a, a friend. And because they're optometrists, they kind of understand the situation that I'm in. And this all leads me on to another point with optometry. A lot of, depending on where you work, a lot of optometry practices are actually open on the weekends. And on top of that, they actually work holidays as well. This could be particularly tough because a lot of your friends who work normal jobs or your family for example they tend to have weekends off or they'll have time off during the holidays now to share my experience I used to work a job every Sunday and I didn't I dreaded it actually um, so I did come up with a sort of a list of things to do to help out with that um, in fact when I went to a job that had no weekends I kind of missed working the weekend because I had that day off but anyway I'll, I'll go through that list I really advise just limiting your social media use you're gonna see a lot of brunches on Sunday mornings and a lot of people going out on Saturday night when you're staying in at home another thing is to try and make friends who are in the same boat retail friends work great or some I had a friend who was in banking and they worked on a weekend so they had um, the same days off as I did and if you have those types of friends you can organize things to do during the week when everyone else is working another thing too is to have hobbies so I used to have a hobby of skiing down in Christchurch and I actually hated going skiing on the weekends because it was so busy but because I had a day off during the week I was able to go when it wasn't as busy and the bonus point is I had friends who also had that day off too so I wasn't alone and another thing I really advise is just remember to use up your annual leave that's really important to use it it's there to be used so if you need a weekend off just take the annual leave and take the day off great so it's all about playing that long-term game consistency is key it might get boring but as long as you're putting a smile on people's faces you're doing the right job i hope you find this useful take care and talk soon